Well, hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I hope everyone out there is having a great day. So if you ask me what two stamping techniques are most effective for grading great results, especially on one layer cards, I would say the two would be heat embossing and masking. Well, today I'm going to show how you can combine the two for even more impactful results. This is great for layering any stamps that you may have and for creating those really tough to do one layer cards. I'll show how you can use heat embossing for masking to save time on your cards. But I'll be honest, I picked pretty elaborate card designs today, but they definitely demonstrate how heat emboss masking works. I will start by showing some fun layered cards, and then at the end of this video, I'll do three cards that kind of pull all the dot ideas together, and those three are my favorite. Well, let's get started with this one, where I use heat emboss masking to create a watercolor around my stamping. I'll be using the new all to new Bountiful Branches stamp set. Now this set is supposed to be, I think, for holiday cards. However, as you'll see with my examples today, it can be used year round to create realistic results. Now the layering stamp sets from all to new now come with this packaging that's kind of like a brochure of ideas. Now in here, you'll also see the layering guide for that stamp set and some suggestions on ink colors. Well, I wanted to show you that these card ideas right here, the ones on the left, these are actually card fronts. I think they're four and a quarter by five and a half, and you can cut them out and use them on a card. Or you could do what I'm doing today, which is to use it as a guide to get great stamping placement. The images on this card example are the same as the stamps themselves. So I have a few pieces of white watercolor paper. This is from Tim Holtz. I like his watercolor paper simply because it's bright white. I'm also using my Misty stamping tool today as it'll be very helpful to doing the stamp layering on multiple cards at once, but you could use an acrylic block. So I placed the example into my Misty and I have the bottommost layer of the leaves, the one with the most solid area to it, and I'm placing that into the Misty. If you look at the stamping guide, it's the first suggested layer. I lined up the leaves of the stamp with the leaves on the example, and now I can go ahead and stamp this. I'm using Altenew Frayed Leaf Ink for this, and I'm actually going to stamp three different pieces today. The reason I'm doing three is because if I've got the stamps out, I might as well make multiple examples. Now I wanted this green ink to be slightly darker than it is, so I'm double stamping it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So I use that guide to help me place my stamp and it is a huge time saver. And I always like the designs that Altenew suggests in that packaging. Now I'm leaving that stamp on my Misty where it is and I'm moving this card up to the top part of my Misty, lining up the next layer. So this is the layer with the second most amount of solid area. And I'm stamping this with Altenew Just Green ink on all three pieces. Since I have room in my Misty, I'm leaving that solid area where it is, that stamp there on the bottom of my Misty, because we want to come back to that later and it's positioned just right. If you have a smaller Misty, you could take it out and reposition it later. So now I'm here with the third layer of the leaves and I'm lining it up. This one's particularly easy to line up, but I could always go to that example to help with placement if I prefer. After stamping with dark green ink, it's time to do the branch that connects these leaves. I could line it up on my own, but I have that guide, so I might as well use it. I'm lining the branch stamp up with the branches on the example, and then I can stamp this with mocha ink. Now at this point, I could go on and do the berries once I've done all my branches here, but I'm going to stop and add the heat embossing. We're going to heat emboss everything that I stamp here. But instead of doing all the layers, I'm just going to go back to the solid most layer, that first layer of leaves, and then the branch itself. And since I have the stamps in my Misty, they're ready to stamp right back where I stamped them before. But this time I'm stamping with Versamark ink. So on top of the leaves I stamped with Versamark, and now on top of the branch I'm stamping with Versamark. Now I'm adding clear embossing powder and heat setting that, and now all of the stamping is covered with heat embossing. Not only do the images have a beautiful shine to them, but they're protected. The color is trapped underneath it. 
So I'll now be able to do whatever stamping and watercoloring I want to on top and it won't mess up those leaves and branches. Okay, so now it's time to do the berries. I could have done this earlier as I mentioned, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm starting with the most solid stamp. That's the first one suggested on the layering guide. And this creates like the base of the berries. On each card, I'm going to do different color examples just to show that you could use this for year round cards. So I start with the lightest ink as always. I did coral berry. This one is buttercream. This will end up being orange colored little berries. And the last one are my make believe bright blue berries, my little turquoise berries. Uh, this is with dewdrop, which is a beautiful soft pool color. Now I'm going to leave that stamp where it is since we'll need to use it again. And I'll go ahead and do the additional layers of the berries. Now they're easy to line up, but I can always use that guide if I want to. I'll skip ahead here and I have all of my berry layers done. So I'm going back to that first solid layer of berries and stamping that again in the same spot with Versamark ink. I'm adding clear embossing powder to it and heat setting it. And I'll do this to all three pieces. Now I have all of my stamping covered with that clear embossing so it's completely protected and it amazes me <laughs> how realistic these images look. Now I can repeat the process to do the other branch in the other location on the card. This actually didn't take that long in real life since I'm doing multiples. So it took me maybe 45 minutes to create all three card panels, which really isn't much since this is pretty much the core of the card. So now I can add a variety of things over this heat embossing. I could stamp with dye ink, I could put dye ink over it with an ink blending tool, or I could do watercolor, and that's what I'm going to do on these. I decided to do like a soft wash of blue watercolor over it, but you could do deeper or darker colors, and the heat embossing will resist that color. It's like you masked your images when you're adding the color over it. So I'm using the Alta New watercolor here. You could use pretty much any watercolor. Over on the right there, I'm putting some water onto my glass mat, picking up some of that blue color and putting it into that water. I like to work on this glass mat because I have as much room as I want to mix as much as I want. I'm not great with watercolor, so whatever makes it easier for me is what I go for. Now I'm spraying this with water just so that the paper is wet. And then I'm bringing some of the watercolor over to it with a wide brush. I really wanted a soft look, but I think this would be really neat with a darker color because all of that heat embossing will resist that color. So I can apply this on here and just set it aside to dry on its own. And we'll have our crisp stamped images with the watercolor around it. Now, if I didn't put embossing over these images, all of that ink would have bled when I added this water. On this one, I decided I want a little bit darker watercolor close to the image. So I applied that first and then kind of spread the color out and softened it towards the edges. I really like how I end up with that soft watercolor around those bold heat embossed images. Okay, so after I let these dry, I went ahead and trimmed them down and added them to four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note cards. And I black heat embossed a sentiment in the center of the wreaths. Actually, I used black pigment ink and then put clear embossing powder on it. For the red berry card, I decided to do a holiday theme. I used the Altenew For All Seasons stamp set. I like that this stamp set has script words that you can build together to make different sentiments. And in this case, I could place the words where I wanted so that I could fit them inside of that wreath. Now for the blueberry one, I just added an I admire you sentiment to the center. You could add some shimmer to this, you could add little gems or pearls, but I wanted to keep it very simple and clean since there's so much detail in those, in those uh, berry images. That I admire you is from this Alta New Build a Flower stamp set, and I'll be using those flowers later on in this video. And for the card with the orange berries, I used the Hello from the Alta New Half Tone Circle Stamp Set. I have used the sentiments in this stamp set so much, I need to clean them so they get their stick back. But that Hello was the perfect fit for the center of the wreath. So with this example, I showed how you can use heat embossing over your stamping to mask or resist any watercolor you put on top. 
Okay, my next two cards, you're going to have to bear with me because I kind of went overboard with my layering. I did a lot of stuff on it, but I wanted to show how you can use heat embossing for masking when you want to layer images on a one layer card. Now mine's two layer because I glued it onto a note card, but you could make it one layer if you wanted. Okay, so for both of these cards, I use the Altenew Holiday Bow stamp set. Now this stamp set looks great when you look at it, but when you take a closer look, you'll realize there are so many different options in this one set. On the left, you have the images to create a large layered bow. On the right are the images to create a large layered poinsettia. Then there are several different options for creating little branches with leaves. You've got the pine and other options, even some twigs that have little berries on them. I like that there are several options so you can create several different looks or use them together. And you can even use some of those leaves on non-holiday cards. I'll create two cards at once here. Since I have the stamps out, I might as well. On one card, I'll have the bow as the focal point. On the other, I'll have the flower as the focal point. Let's stamp the flower first. Now in this case, I'm doing something different than what I usually do. I'm starting with the second layer of the two instead of the first layer, the most solid layer. That's because these are easy to line up. I can stamp this and then easily line up the solid layer on top of it. And then I'll have that solid layer in my stamping tool to do the Versamark ink version so that we can heat emboss this. Whatever order you want to go in is fine. As long as when you're done, you cover it with Versamark ink so you can do that clear heat embossing. In that case, I stamped a couple different red inks because I wasn't happy with the first result. You can always change your look by stamping another layer with a different color. This time I stamped with Versamark ink, added the clear embossing to it just to trap all that color underneath. Now for the second card, I have the outline of the bow image. Again, I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm stamping the outline first and I'll work my way to the solid image just so I can save time and not have to switch back. So here I'm doing the outline in the darkest color. Then this one adds a little bit of shading in the medium color. Then I'll finish off with the solid image and this will be in the lightest color. In fact, the light color that I used was so light that I decided to stamp it multiple times just to make it a little bit darker. Now that I have this solid image, the first layer, in my Misty, I can go ahead and also stamp that with the Versamark ink and then add the clear embossing to it. That way all the color will be trapped under that embossing. After I heat embossed this, I noticed that my heat embossing was very bumpy. I hadn't captured enough of the embossing powder on it before I heat set it. So once it cooled, I'm going to stamp with Versamark ink again. So right on top of that heat embossed layer, I'm stamping with Versamark ink and adding another layer of embossing powder and heat setting that. That will give a smoother result. That way it can be sure that I have all of the color captured below a clear embossed layer so we can do some masking. So using the heat embossing as our mask, we can now stamp some leaves over this. I have some leaves from the same stamp set. I'm stamping them in two different colors of green ink. And notice I'm overlapping with the flower, but because that heat embossing is there, I can wipe the ink off of it. And you get a beautiful one layer masked look, but you didn't have to cut any masks. I find using heat embossing for masking is most effective when you have really elaborate images that would be hard to cut out from a mask or if you're doing a lot of layering as I'm doing here. So next I stamp those same leaf images with Versamark ink right on top of the color and added clear embossing. Now you'll see some of the clear embossing sticks to the flower. I wiped some of it off, but you don't have to. You can, you can leave that powder there. It'll just melt into the powder that's already on your card. So each time I stamp with the color, then the Versamark ink, and then I clear heat emboss it. So now I can stamp more leaves and they can overlap with anything that I already have on my card. While I have those leaf images in my Misty, I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp them also on my bow image. 
I really am a big fan of making multiple cards at once, especially in this case where you can easily mask using that heat embossing. I use a dry cloth when I'm wiping off the heat emboss layer. It really works well and I'll link to the cloths that I use below. Again, I stamped with the Versamark ink on top of the green leaves and I'm adding clear embossing powder so those have that resist effect, basically a mask over your stamping. Okay, back to the flower card. I'm arranging some more leaf images. I'll do the same thing. I'll stamp them with green ink, wipe the excess ink away from anything that overlaps with the heat embossing we already have. Then I'll stamp it with clear Versamark ink, add that clear embossing powder and heat set again. So every time we're kind of trapping our color underneath that clear embossing powder, which allows us to continue to add more layers without having to cut mass. Cutting mass for all of these leaves would really be difficult, so the heat embossing saves us a lot of time. And in the end, everything will have that great shine to it. And yes, these cards are pretty complicated. I'm layering a lot of things together. But in the end, I saved time because I didn't have to cut out masks for all of the images. And I end up with a beautiful shine to them when I'm done. So I continued to add more layers using different images from that same stamp set. They're all from the same set. And I did this to both the card with the flower and the card with the bow. Once I was done, I wanted to stamp on top of it. So I'm using the Altenew Pattern Play Diamond Stamp Set for the poinsettia card. I'm putting the large background stamp into my Misty, and you can see I did lots of different layers with this particular card, but everything I did I heat embossed on top. So it's all stamped with color, then clear heat embossed. So I'm putting this into my Misty, and I'll stamp on top of this with the Altenew Morning Frost ink. This is a greenish gray color that is beautiful when stamped with any kind of floral image. And it's soft enough that it won't distract. But the great thing is, is I don't have to mask what's already on my card. Because I have that clear heat embossing over all of it, I can easily wipe the excess ink away from those images. And I essentially masked from that stamping that we did on top. So I trimmed that down and then I added it to a red four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I also added a sentiment that I heat embossed. So I was able to do a ton of layering on this card. I mean a crazy amount of layering without having to cut a single mask. So give it a try. You might be surprised heat embossing can make an effective mask and save you time. The Hallelujah sentiment is from the Altenew Blessings stamp set. This is new. It has mostly holiday sentiments, but there are many things that are non-holiday, including glory to God, God is good, and sending you God's blessings. I think those can be used all year round, and I'll use it on my next card too. Now for the card with the bow, I'll be using the Altenew Starry Night stamp set. There are some beautiful sentiments in this one for the holiday season, but I'll be using that corner stamp. It's like a corner border stamp there at the top. And I'll stamp that around the edge of my card. Again, I do not need to create any mask for the stamping I have already because we have that heat embossing. And that heat embossing will resist any stamping that we do on top with a dye ink. It'll also resist any stamping you do with a pigment ink too. Just don't use anything like stays on when stamping on top. So here I'm stamping with the Dew Drop ink, and I'll stamp it around all four sides. I can wipe any excess ink off of the heat embossing with a dry cloth. I then trimmed it down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, added a Sending You God's Blessings from the same Blessings stamp set, and added a few pearls here and there. So again, I was able to stamp lots of images with a layered look, without having to cut a single mask. Okay, we're on our last three cards. These kind of combine everything that I've shown you so far in these videos. But I also show how to do this when you don't have layered stamps. I'm using the Altenew Build a Flower stamp set that I showed you earlier. I think these flowers are really fun because they have an artsy look to it when you stamp them. And there are some great sentiments in it. 
Let me show you the packaging for it so you can see some of the card ideas. I'm going to follow this one that you see here on the right. So I'll cut that out again and use it as a guide to layer my stamping. But keep in mind in here are lots of ideas and they even suggest different colors you could use for the inks for your stamping layer, which is sometimes challenging to figure out. Okay, so in my Misty stamping tool, I have my piece of white cardstock for the card front. And then I also have my example that I cut out from the packaging, but I'm shifting it over to the right a bit so that when I stamp on my panel, it's a little bit to the right. I wanted my flower to the right hand side of the card. I'm starting with the outline this time, just like I did on the last example. And I'll stamp that first. And I'll do this on three different panels. I put a little piece of tape to mark where my little guide will be in my Misty each time. So I'm using my anti-static powder tool, stamping this with a black pigment ink, and then clear heat embossing. And again, I'm doing that on three different panels so I can make three examples at once. Now I'll take this solid image for the flower and I'll stamp that onto each of the panels with a very light ink. Now this stamp set, as I mentioned, gives a very artsy look. It doesn't stamp in the flower completely. So I decided that after I stamp the light color, I would come in with some markers and add a little bit of shading here and there or add the look of dimension. I like to do this often. It makes a big difference and doesn't take much time at all. In this case, I used some Copic markers in a slightly darker color and just kind of drew some lines coming out from the center. You don't have to do this, but again, I think it makes a big difference. And I did this to all of my flowers. Now you notice that the solid image for this flower didn't cover the entire flower. So I couldn't use that to stamp with my Versamark ink pad and add clear embossing. So instead, I'm coloring in the entire image with my Versamarker pen. This pen is very handy to have. It's clear and sticky, so you can cover the entire image with this, then add your clear embossing powder and heat set it and get a heat embossed image. So think about it, you could stamp any image you want, color it how you want, add that Versamarker pen, then clear embossing and heat set it, and you have a heat embossed image. And therefore, you can use that as a mask for your additional layers. So I'm back in my Misty stamping tool. I have my guide lined up against that purple tape, and I'll line up the different leaf images that are included in that flower stamp set. I'm again starting with the outline image. I will put them all in place. It'll save time because I can do many images here at once. And I'll stamp them all with that black VersaFine ink. Anything that overlaps with our heat embossing, I can wipe away with a dry cloth. If it doesn't come off easily with a dry cloth, you could instead use a baby wipe on that heat embossed image. It'll wipe right off that heat embossing. But be careful because you don't want to smear it onto your cardstock around the heat embossing. So there you can see I'm easily wiping away anything that overlaps. I could have cut a mask for that flower, but we're going to continue to do more masking with those leaves. And I didn't want to cut out all of those masks. And I like the look of that heat embossed image. And I'm going to add stamping or inking over this entire surface when I'm done. Next, I lined up the more solid images for the leaves, stamped those with green, added a little bit of the look of dimension with darker green Copic markers, and then I colored all of those in with my Versamarker pen, just as I did for the, with the flower, added clear embossing powder, and heat set that. So what I'll end up with is all of these images are covered with clear embossing. So now I can stamp over these, stencil over these, watercolor over these, anything that I want to do with inks that would be resisted by that heat embossing. So I ended up with three card panels like this one, one in yellow, one in blue, and one in pink. And I'll show you three different things that you can do on top of that heat embossing. For the yellow card, I'll show how you can stamp on top. I'm using the Altenew Pinstripe Stamp Set. This is one that I've used in many videos. It's a great subtle background stamp. I'll put this into my Misty stamping tool and I'll stamp on top of that yellow card 
with buttercream ink from Altenew. Now, since all of my stamping on the card right now is heat embossed, when I stamp on top of it, it'll resist that ink that we're stamping and I can wipe anything off of that heat embossing. So I end up with clear images with that background stamp around it. Now I went for a very soft look where I stamped with soft yellow ink around that soft yellow flower, but you could stamp on top with a darker color, which would make a great impact because it would be around the flowers, but not on top of them, thanks to that heat embossed masking that we did. Now another option that you can do over your heat embossed images is to do ink blending. For my blue card, I'm using the same blue ink, which is Dew Drop, and an ink blending tool to rub right around the flower. So it kind of creates kind of a blue halo around our flower, very subtle. But again, the heat embossing resists that ink that we put on top and I can just wipe the excess away. I again went for a very soft look but you could have done a darker color around this if you wanted to. And your clear embossing would resist it and give a nice, clean, crisp look. Now for my third example here, I wanted to show how you can use a stencil over the heat embossed image. I'm using one of my favorite Altenew stencils, the Feeling Dotty. I've used it many times. And I'm using an ink blending tool with frosty pink ink to apply dots over our stamped image. Because we heat emboss the image, it resists or masks that color that we're putting on top. So we can wipe away the excess ink and we have a dot pattern around our flower, but not on top of it. So you can see here how masking with the heat embossing really saved us a lot of time because cutting masks for all of those leaves and flowers would have taken too much time and this gives much better results. So there you have a way to use heat embossing for masking purposes. I hope this inspires you. I did kind of complicated examples there in the middle, but if I can do it with those cards, we can do it with pretty much any images. If you want to know about the supplies that I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description. There's a couple more videos in the middle that are related that might be helpful to you. Thanks for spending time with me again. As always, it's very appreciated, and I hope you have a wonderful week.